You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hold on tight. You're about to listen to episode 80 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, Soul Forge listeners. Today, this podcast is brought to you by Sean and Karen. How are you, Karen? I'm all right. I'm looking forward to uh, talking about fandom and how it's changing the world today. Because it definitely is. Absolutely. I mean, things are so much different than from when we were little, and um, the fandom groups that are coming together and finding each other through social media and conventions and stuff are doing amazing things. Definitely. And when we were kids, we we were, would you call us nerds or geeks? Uh, For me, all of the above. Nerds, geeks. uh, Well, I was a Trekkie with a fungus collection, so. Right. (laughs) You're the only one I know who ever collected mushrooms. I was really excited when they said that Stamets was going to be an astromycologist because I was like, yes, weird geeky fungus guy, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) So that's why you can relate to that character. Yeah, part of it, for sure. That's cool. Yeah, because when I was a kid, uh, we didn't, of course, have social media or the internet or anything like that. So you had to uh, find your collective, your your nerd pocket, the old-fashioned way. You talk to people. Right. I remember in junior kindergarten, I showed up wearing an original series science officer shirt, climbed to the top of the climber in the middle of the classroom and surveyed all the humans, and nobody thought that was cool. Really? That surprises <laughs> me. They, they weren't into it. No. Oh. They, they didn't get it, and the ones that did were like, oh, that's, that's too weird. Because <laughs> you were too out there. Yeah. Right, because uh, if, if you were nerdy or geeky back in the day, back in the 80s, Remember mm-hmm. the 80s kids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was not a thing. Because uh, it, uh, it was wrestling, and it was hockey cards, and it, mm-hmm. it, it was baseball, and it was all that kind of stuff. And if you liked science fiction or whatever, that was frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, people, people had a problem with you. It wasn't just frowned upon. It was like um, they thought there was something wrong. Yeah, so you'd get a wedgie, or you'd get beat up, or mm-hmm. exactly. made fun of in some way. Exactly. And it's amazing to see that changing because it's something something that I always wanted to change and wondered why it didn't change. And there's there's a lot of great things about that. I mean, one thing is, is there's a lot of stuff we can get now that just wasn't for sale when we were kids. That's true. Yeah, When we were kids, we had to make the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I remember my uh, buddy Andrew, he used to make uh, tricorders and phaser rifles out of cardboard. Right, exactly. And uh, we used rocks for tricorders sometimes too and that's great but I think that that the past with all the difficulties and dealing with bullying and stuff like that has made the geek population into two camps um I was mentioning earlier that uh, it seems like all this hardship creates almost like a superpower in us and you can kind of choose are you going to go superhero or super villain the choice is yours but make it wisely Exactly, because some people who are bullied and who deal with all the, these things that are an outcast, they want to grab that power, and they want to keep it, and they want to control their world, and they want to make sure that nobody makes them feel like that again. And then there's other people who go out and look at all the new technologies and the new social groups we have as geeks and nerds, and they turn that into something amazing. And I think a lot of the celebrities who are starring in nerdy and geeky shows these days they grew up they were kids like us right and and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about now um I volunteer on a suicide crisis line on the internet it was my training was funded by the cast of Supernatural oh wow one of them dealt with his own depression and others listened to people at various conventions telling them their life stories talking about loneliness and bullying and depression and, and they thought hey you know what 
we have all these people who are willing to do things with us and to help, and we have the power and the ability to create something. And uh, now there's this crisis line that's helping a lot of people. That's, that's important. And, and you do hear that a lot, too, because celebrities are always talking about uh, somebody who went up to them and said, you know, that episode that you did, that changed my life, and it stopped me from doing this or that, or it, uh, it comforted me in a time of loneliness or whatever. And some celebrities are like, oh, yeah, cool. But some actually take it to heart, like you're saying. Right. And I, th I think that comes from, you know, when you're, when you're a person and you're in a situation where somebody you don't know comes up and tells you these intensely personal things, it's like, what do I do with this? How can I do anything with this? Because I don't know them. I'm not going to be there tomorrow. I'm not going to, you know, so you can't really, you can't really take that on in any, in any se sense of meaning. But if you create some sort of a situation within the fandom that helps people find their, their geek family and know where they can get support that's doing something. Um, Chase Masterson runs a charity, Pop Culture Superhero, I think I it think is. that's Pop what it's Culture called. Heroes. And that deals with bullying as well mm -hmm. and all kinds of things and like that. Because so, she dealt with a lot of bullying growing up. Yeah. Uh, of course, she played Lita, the double girl in Deep Space Nine. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then also Misha Collins, also from Supernatural, runs a scavenger hunt that I'm a part of. But the scavenger hunt is partly for fun and to spread weirdness through the world, but it's also to make good things happen, to change the world using the power of fandom. We have together over the past eight years the fandom and the people who take part in Gish because Gish has become a separate fandom from Misha's fandom. And that's... Uh... Gish, Greatest International Scavenger Hunt? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so the Gish fandom has started out with Supernatural and Misha fans and has grown beyond that to its own entity. But it still tends to be people who are on the edges of what's, cons what's traditionally been considered normal and people who really understand uh, what it is to be an outcast. And uh, we come together and change the world with art and silliness. And we built a school in Nicaragua and um, an orphanage in Haiti and saved a dance school in South Africa and brought five Syrian families out of the terrible situation they were in and housed them and made sure they had opportunities for education and health care. Like, these are things that when fandoms come together with someone who they've looked up to at the head, and even even just groups among themselves, um, amazing things can happen, and we're changing the world. And that's that's awesome. But I guess without the internet, it, it wouldn't have been widespread. No, because like you said, we'd have to talk to people, and we're not always great at that. No, definitely not. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I remember even in the uh, the mid '90s, I was in university, and uh, we were in a class. I can't remember what we were talking about, but the subject of Star Trek came up, mm -hmm. and the teacher asked, uh, "Who in the class is a fan of Star Trek?" And I, and I was the biggest geekiest Star Trek fan out there, but I didn't raise my hand, and nobody else in the class did either. And, and I was like, looking around, I'm like. There's got to be at least one. There's got to be at least one there. other one, but it was still an embarrassing thing. You didn't talk about it, especially right. in a in a large group of people like that, who, who you didn't know. If it was Star Wars, everybody would have raised their hand. Yeah, that that was that was one of the ones that became okay sooner. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, I think it's because there was more focus on action and romance and so on, and less on the nerdy, yeah, sciency stuff. More good versus evil, and yeah, that kind and of thing. and so. It was taking classic stories and putting them into a futuristic, science-y, science fiction-y setting, but it wasn't real science fiction. No more fantasy. Right. Um, fantasy in space. And people, people could be okay with that. Right. Because you can like fantasy things, more so, I find. Like Lord of the Rings, everybody's, oh yeah, I love Lord of the Rings. I love Star Wars and whatever else there is out there, you know. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you say, oh, I like Star Trek or Babylon 5, oh, all right, weirdo. Yeah. Not so much now. It's but... becoming more okay to be passionate about the things we like, whatever those happen to be. And, and that's wonderful, I think, for our kids and people who are growing up now because they can talk about the things they like. And 
that helps them to find other people who are into whatever it is they're into mm -hmm. instead of just sitting around wondering, you know, well, there's got to be at least one other person here, but I'm not putting up my hand. Right. And, and when I was in that class sitting there, I wanted to raise my hand so bad, but I was like 19. Right. I was like, mm, no, I'm not going to. Yeah, am I going to out myself as the freak in the room or... <laughs> the last thing I wanted to be was an outcast. Right. At the beginning of the school year. Yeah. In a foreign city, you know, like, no. So oh, I didn't... yeah, you needed to meet new people. And... Exactly, and if I let my geek flag fly, I, I, maybe it would have been a good thing, but maybe it wouldn't. But I've always thought of that as like almost like a watershed moment where, mm. where, where I could have embraced the geekiness instead of hiding it. See, I was never able to hide it, and I think I think that has to do with how socially awkward I really am. I, I can't read people, and I've had to teach myself how to um, make sure that my facial expressions say what I want them to and stuff like that. So if you don't notice what it is that's awkward, you don't care as much. Uh, I guess that makes sense. And um, then you don't realize how you've gotten yourself into situations where everybody knows you're a freak until you're being beat up and they're telling you <laughs> right I guess that's true <laughs> good and bad out of that um but the I think the good part is like I was saying I think that some of those hardships and the loneliness and the dealing with people just not accepting us have given us what it takes to become these these gangs of people changing the world for good it certainly sounds like it and it's a lot different from the, the sports geeks, mm -hmm. right? Because it was always acceptable to be a fan of sports. Right. And that's still a fandom. It's still a... Oh, it absolutely it's, is. It's still a geeky thing. This is Mandy from Caster Quest, and we're inviting you to join us as we explore Patrick Rothfuss's best-selling fantasy series, The Kingkiller Chronicle. You can find Caster Quest at casterquest.com, on SoundCloud, on Apple Podcasts, or at our podcast network at ESOPodcast.com. Research and Chandrian, Ambrose Jack is dumb, a load and den is on a date. Master Kilvin, old ass man, a selling lamps to folks in Emre, Will and Sim and Deox, Danchin, Tabalin the Great. So, so why is it more acceptable to paint your face and your team's colors and jump up and down and scream than it is to put on Klingon ridges and go into public and roar? I mean... What's the difference? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, and and the surface, not much. The, the thing is the subject matter. Yeah. And maybe sports are more uh, akin to violence and our hunter-gatherer uh, manly culture, mm -hmm. the patriarchy and all that good stuff. So, yeah, you can like your sports and dress up like, uh, I don't know, I don't even know a sports guy. Like, yes, uh, <laughs> a sports guy. <laughs> I think mostly they just wear their team's colors and stuff. Look at me. I'm Jose Canseco. <laughs> there, there's a name from the past. I know that name. He, I can't tell you off the top of my head who it is. A uh, baseball player. Oh, okay. I think the California Angels in the 80s, but I'm not sure if that's even a team. So. See, I didn't Oakland really A's? get into know. sports. I played basketball for a while in school, and uh, I, I did some things, but I never really got into sports until roller derby. And then I started to appreciate skating and stuff. So now I can look at a hockey game and appreciate it, but I don't follow it. And, like, I wouldn't be able to name players and stuff, except for, you know, like Wayne Gretzky from way in the past because his name was everywhere. Right. And uh, Yammer Yager and Steve Eiserman. Right. And uh, who was who the guy who played for Boston that was not Gretzky? What the heck was his name? I can't even remember. Mario somebody? Uh, I have like See, several I, Mario names in my head and, and they're all like, not that guy, not that guy. <laughs> I don't know. But um, all I know is that once I played roller derby and I got the feeling of skating, that was what was made me able to look at hockey and appreciate what those guys were doing. It wasn't, uh, I think I needed to, to be able to put myself in a situation and I wasn't able to before, but I I could read a book and put myself into the situations that people were in in science fiction novels. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think that was a difference for me. But also, with sports, you're not thinking beyond the moment. And so it's, it's a totally different kind of thinking that you need to use to appreciate each one. Right, right, okay. Yeah, because uh, back in the 90s, I was a big collector of uh, hockey and baseball cards. And I could tell you all the players' names and what team they were on and whatnot. I never watched hockey or baseball because I didn't care. That's was, totally different because it was the collecting. you were a collector of 
details and cards and information. That's right. That's different than being an actual sports fan. Right, because I didn't care about the sports. Right. I just wanted to have a complete collection of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what the impulse behind that was, but that's what I did. And I couldn't tell you what their stats were, but I could tell you the crew complement of a Constitution class starship. You know, <laughs> right. But right. who was on what team in what year from so, what year to... I so again, collector of information that's, of specific types. That's right. And, and the hockey and the baseball stuff didn't uh, penetrate my consciousness, mm -hmm. but the Star Trek stuff does. Yeah. And the Star Trek stuff helps us to learn how to navigate the real world as well, <laughs> which is which is good for people who, who don't necessarily always know how to do that. What would Captain Kirk do in this situation? That's not always a good, <laughs> a good thing to follow. He would do the flying hi or kiss the girl. Yeah. One or the other. Or talk the computer to death. I'd have a whole lot more ripped t-shirts if I followed what he would do. Right. You would. That's true. <laughs> And, and I like my t-shirts, so I don't so you, think I'll do that. Yeah, you don't want them ripped? No. No, keep them intact? Yeah, that's probably no. a good idea. Once again, we're way off where we started. Yeah, because we're talking about how <laughs> fandom changed the world. Right, and, and now we're, we're talking about ripped shirts and Captain Kirk and sports. But really, um, every subject really dovetails into those two categories. Mm. Ripped shirt Kirk and sports. That's what the world's about. <laughs> And if it's not, I don't want to be a part of that world. I wonder if William Shatner knows that. <laughs> <laughs> he might. I don't know. I don't know. If you are loving this podcast, if you're loving this podcast, you should tell a friend about it. Spread the word about podcasts you think they would enjoy. There's something for everyone from entertainment and lifestyle to news and politics and more. Share it on social media. Believe it or not, some people don't know how great podcasts are or even how to find and listen to them. You can help change that with a click. Tell your friends about your favorite podcast. Thanks for spreading the word. But yeah, uh, but back to the topic at hand, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more socially acceptable to be geeky or nerdy. Yeah. And uh, look at uh, look at Bill Gates, the biggest nerd in the world, and Elon Musk. Well, I think that might be how it started to change. You know, when technology started getting lucrative, and the nerds started making a lot of money because they were the ones creating these things that were changing the world. People wanted to be like them. And people started to get interested in technology and intelligence and the things that these guys liked. What did they like? Science fiction. Yeah, exactly. So things started to get popular mm -hmm. and everybody started to see the things that they could appreciate in the various franchises. So the fandoms grew. And there was a bit of kickback from the people who were there since the start and there still is. I mean... Well, for sure. We like this first. Don't, yeah. li don't like what I like. I liked it first. Yeah, how dare you? You didn't have to go through being beaten up in the schoolyard. And... That's right. It's like the new people get a free pass almost. Mm -hmm. And so people get upset about that. People get upset with me because how dare I like Star Trek when I have boobs. And so Is then they start really? to quiz me about it. And like, do you know what number was on the door of the uh, room that Kirk passed in episode number? And it's like, dude, come on now. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. You get that? Yeah. Wow. Because people want to test to make sure that you're not just a fake geek girl. Oh, uh, the gatekeepers of fandom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Lots of and, that. And um, the thing is, and, and that's, that's kind of sad because, like I was saying, when we all band together, we can create an amazing force for good that changes a lot. Um, on a local level, our Klingon club tries to do that. We've, we've worked with a number of charities. And people get involved because... You know, even if they don't want to put on a costume themselves, mm -hmm. they like when we show up to things. Yeah. They like to support what we do. And we haven't raised tons of money, but we've made a difference for the Humane Society, for Wounded Warriors, the Science Village. Because mm -hmm. every little bit helps. Mm hmm Yeah. And when you, have, when you have something in common that brings people together, it makes it a lot easier to focus on whatever the task at hand may be. Mm hmm That's true. And, and I've gone out with you guys, put on the ridges, and uh, I'm, I'm not as involved as you guys are. We're working on finding your inner Klingon. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's slowly emerging. I think, I think maybe it's, it's behind that you that was afraid to put up his hand somewhere. Probably. There's, there's still part of me that is traumatized from my childhood it because feels, of that. It feels kind of silly and, you know. Yeah. But one, once you get past that, you're going to find your inner Klingon and then, then... And then watch out. Yeah. Exactly. Then things are going to get crazy. Oh, totally. <laughs> Crazier. Yeah, they're already kind of crazy. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. 
It's all fun. That's fun. It um, is. When we went out to the uh, the tree lighting ceremony the other day, I overheard someone behind me say, "It isn't a party in Timmins till the Klingons show up." Nice. So <laughs> that's awesome. Your reputation precedes you. Yeah, exactly. And and again, once people know you're there, then you're more able to to use that to make a difference. And and now I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> well, you're just making a difference and supporting causes, raising mm-hmm. money and not worrying about the uh, the bullies of the past. Right. Helping to create a world where people are more able to follow their passions, to be themselves, to feel okay doing that, and knowing that in their hard moments there's somewhere where they can get whatever the kind of help they need and talk to people who know what they're going through. That's basically what a number of organizations we've worked at do for different populations of people. Like you said, your, your GISH organization, through, through all the uh, participants' registration fees, have gone ahead and, uh, what was it, an orphanage? Um, that was partly through GISH and partly through Random Act. GISH supports Random Acts through registration fees, but also um, there's always an item where, that involves fundraising for a specific cause. Okay. And uh, they've supported building an orphanage in Haiti, a school in Nicaragua, um, last year, the uh, change of life item in Gish was raising money to buy farmland, a farm market booth, and tools so that women who survived the Rwandan genocide could support each other and their families and uh, rebuild their town. So 250 women and their children have farmland and homes and tools and a place to sell stuff so that they can now take care of themselves and be self-sufficient. That's super impressive. Mm-hmm. And that's because thousands of people worldwide came together through this thing that started with supernatural fandom. Right. So the power of fandom changes the world. Exactly. It makes it better piece by piece here and there. Exactly. And it uh, brings people together into geeky fan communities, and it just it makes everybody feel more accepted. Right. Which is awesome. And yeah, it's every time I look back at what we do, it's it's like, hey, this is amazing. It really is. When Never you, would have been able to to picture it when I was a kid. No, no, because the 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 geeks were isolated and picked on. Yeah, when I was in the basement looking at my fungus collection, I didn't think, hey, someday we're we're gonna build an orphanage and change the world. Uh, no, probably <laughs> probably you didn't. No, that was the furthest thing from your mind. I'm guessing. Exactly. Yeah, it was so. just you know. Grow up, survive, do something interesting. Yep, exactly. So the moral of the story is, don't be afraid to show your geekdom. You don't know who you'll inspire. You don't know what kind of community you can help create. And what you can do to change the world is limitless. That's it. That's it. All right, so that's the power of fandom. Thanks again, Karen, for uh, coming on a Soul Forge podcast. It's always good to have you here. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It was fun. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, do, Do you want to remind the listeners what your Twitter handle is if they'd like to reach you? going to look that up. I have a different handle on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. Twitter, I, I, I think, is Flindonara. I, I know on Instagram you are Lady, Lady Danger 47. That is correct. Yeah, and on Twitter I'm Flindonara. F-L-Y-N-N-D-A-N-A-R-R-A. Perfect. So if anybody would like to contact Karen or just follow her, there you go. Flindonara on Twitter and Lady Danger 47 on Instagram. And of course, you know how you can reach me. Uh, it's all in the end credits. So thanks for coming by the Forge. And until next time, remember, it helps if you remember that everyone is doing their best from their level of consciousness. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Soul Forge Pod or email the show via soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Soul Forge is a production of Sean Vanderloo and Friends. You can find Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Remember to visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by the Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.